Hi all. So in today's class, we will study about different protection modes of SCR. In your syllabus, DIDT and DV by DT protection is already specified. So I will be uh, explaining in detail these two methods and just mentioning about the other methods also. Okay, let's see. So you have you, so in the in the previous class you have studied about uh, the turn on and turn off Chiara that is a dynamic Chiara. So all this knowledge is required here. Okay, so now let's see. For satisfactory and reliable operation, the specified rating of an SCR should not be excited. So there is a particular rating. So if you check the data sheet, the SCR will be having a specified rating. So that should not be exceeded. If that is exceeded, means the SCR will be burned. It will get damaged, right? So how it is getting burned and what can be done to prevent that? That's what we are studying here. So that can happen due to overload, voltage transients and other abnormal conditions. So you, you might be familiar with these things in your power electronics lab. So when you are doing experiments, so you damage a lot of switches, right? So SCR is one switch that you will damage. So if you are not giving this for protection and all. So if the ratings are exceeded, there is a chance of damage permanently to the SCR. So just like any machine, if you, if you exceed the rating, that will be damaged. Due to the reverse recovery process during turn off, so now we just studied that during turn off there is a reverse recovery process as well as recombination. So during reverse re recovery turn off of the SCR, the voltage overshoot. So you have seen in the graph the voltage overshoot is happening. Also during turn on, switching action produces over voltage in the presence of inductance. So during turn on also the switching action can produce over voltage. So in the event of a short circuit, a large current flow through the SCR, which is very larger than the rated current. Therefore, to avoid the undesirable effect on the SCR due to these abnormal conditions, SCR must be provided with suitable protection circuits. So let's see one by one what it is. So this basically shows an SCR with the protection. Okay, so let's see. No device is ideal. So examination point of view, these things, these knots will be very important, very useful for you. No device is ideal on a practical basis. Over voltage or over current condition may get introduced during the operation. So some of the conditions are when SCR is on, turned on, then DI by DT, the change in the anode current, you have seen that it can be quite large. That cannot be handled by the device. So DI by DT can be very large. Or a high value of DV by DT, the change in voltage can also be very large. A high value of dv by dt leads to cause the unexpected triggering of the device that is without the presence of gate pulse okay so scr is turned on then di by dt can be quite large and a high value of dv by dt lead to unexpected triggering so even without the presence of scr uh, without gate the scr becomes on sometimes the existence of an unwanted signal the gate cathode terminal also triggers the device so there are different types of thyristor protection schemes available for satisfactory operation. So they are over voltage protection, over current protection, high dv by dt protection, high di by dt protection, and then thermal protection. So out of all these types of protection, dv by dt protection and di by dt protection are very important. So in your syllabus also, this is only mentioned. So examination point of view, dv by dt and di by dt protection will be very important. Now let's see the theory behind the DV by DT protection. So when the thyristor is in forward blocking state, so you know that J1, J2, J3 junction, so J2 will be reverse bias, junction J2 is in the reverse bias, which acts as a capacitor having constant capacitance value CJ. So the reverse bias junction J2 it acts as a capacitance, so we call it junction capacitance. So you know that current through a capacitor will be I is equal to C into dV by dt. That is, I is proportional to dV by dt if capacitance is constant. So you can see that the leakage current through the junction J2, which is nothing but the leakage current to the device, will increase with the increase in dVA by dt. That is, with the increase in the anode to cathode voltage, the voltage across the SCR, the leakage current IA can also increase. That is, rate of change of applied voltage across the thyristor is increased, means the leakage current also increased. This current can turn on the device. That's what we are saying. The current, this can turn on the device even when the gate signal is absent. So, the 
diarrhea may unwantedly start contacting this is called dv by dt triggering so you will study this as a method when we are talking about diarrhea triggering circuits and must be avoided which can be achieved by using snubber circuit so this unwanted triggering of scr can be avoided by using a snubber circuit so dv by dt protection is given through snubber circuit so now let's explain what is snubber circuit so you can see the figure you can see a snubber circuit means in parallel with the scr there will be a resistance and capacitance so it consists of a capacitor in series with the resistor a capacitor connected in series with the resistor which is applied parallel with the diaristor when s is closed then voltage vs is applied so switch is closed then this voltage vs is applied across the device as well as the capacitance cs so diaristor is not on gate pulse is not given so s is given so switch is on that means cs will get charged at first snubber circuit behaves like a short circuit therefore voltage across the device will be zero gradually voltage across cs builds up at a slow, slow rate so vs is coming so so dv by dt across the thyristor will stay in the allowable range because most of the voltage because the snubber is act cs is acting as snubber cs is acting as a short circuit so before turning on of s thyristor cs is fully charged so, so for the thyristor to turn on we should give a gate gate pulse right so before turning on itself cs is fully charged and after turning on of thyristor it discharges through the capacitor uh, through the scr so this way the circuit will be complete so discharging current can be limited with the help of a, a series also that discharge can be limited so that's why we are using the resistance with the capacitor to keep the value of current and rate of current in a safe limit so you understood what is a snubber circuit right a parallel r rcs combined so, so the capacitor is doing all the work Cap capacitor is get charged cs get charged and then after turn on the capacitor discharge through the scr so the dv by dt as a thyristor will be as a change of anode voltage will be within the allowable rate because we have a parallel short circuit path that is about the snubber circuit now talking about the di by dt protection so that is the rate of change of current with the that is anode current so you have seen in the turn on kara in the forward bias state of thyristor under the presence of a gate signal the thyristor begins to contact obviously basically in this condition the flow of anode current take place near the gate cathode junction of the device and further spread out over the complete junction in a steady manner so gate cathode junction initially due to then all the pn pn layer completely it will be spread it is to be noted here that the design of thyristor might be such that the current must rapidly reach out to the whole region so di by dt that current should rapidly reach to all region so change should happen in case the rate with which the anode current is rising is comparatively high then the spreading velocity of the moment than the spreading so in case so consider a case the rate with which the anode current is rising is comparatively the di by dt is is comparatively higher than the spreading velocity so that so there will be high current density at the junction which lead to generation of local hot spots so if di by dt is very high then it can reach lead to local hot spots at the junction near the gate region because rather than rising so the rising is more than spreading so it is not getting spread in the entire region but the di by dt is very high so that can lead to local hot spots so this production of local hot spots lead to cause location specific heating inside the device and this may destroy the thyristor heating will happen inside to deal with this the di by dt must be within the specified limit when thyristor gets on so in order to keep the di by dt within a specified limit we go for a series inductor an inductor circuit is given in series with the scr for providing di by dt protection so what is this the use of a small inductor that forms a series connection with the anode circuit helps in limiting the di by changing di by dt the inductor helps in maintaining the di di by dt up to the threshold value we know that it is a property of the inductor to oppose the change in current so inductor opposes di by dt so 
it is coming in series. So why local hotspot is happening? Because di by dt is greater than spread of the spreading velocity. So in order to avoid that, we give an inductor in series. An inductor is connecting in series with the thyristor. So it opposes the change in current. Inductor opposes, inductor opposes di by dt. So I hope uh, the two methods, dv by dt protection and di by dt protection, dv by dt protection using snubber and di by dt protection using a series inductor is clear for you. So this is very important examination point of view. Thank you.